Okay, so in this video we're going to take a look at matching motion graphs, which is where you take a position versus time graph and predict what the velocity versus time and acceleration versus time graphs are going to look like. Um, to do this we have a little bit of a key. So let's remember that slope of position versus time, so x versus t, is velocity. Okay, so in this first example I would take a look at what this slope and this spot right here tells me uh, and use that to interpret what the velocity should look like. Well I see that the slope is negative and it is a constant slope meaning there's no curved line. So for my velocity I'm gonna have some negative velocity and it is not changing so I would indicate that with a straight line. Okay then in this uh, middle section where there's a little dotted line there appears to be some sort of quick abrupt change. Um, we're going to kind of ignore that. You don't have to draw this, but when we start to actually look at this in real life, uh, you'll see that this is called a jerk, and there is a quick, swift, sudden change um, in the velocity, which would kind of look like this. And here in this second part, we see that there is a positive slope. So I know that there is some positive velocity. Now, the line is not curved, which means the slope is constant, and that tells me that I should have a straight line on my velocity versus time graph. Okay, well now I can take this velocity versus time graph and predict what the acceleration versus time graph will look like because the slope of a velocity versus time graph is acceleration. So for this first section right here I have a um, slope of zero, right? This has a slope of zero. So I would have no acceleration, which makes sense because I have a constant velocity, which means that I'm not getting faster or slowing down. Um, here in this middle part, there's some sort of crazy thing happening. Again, this is typically what's called a jerk, um, and there might be some weird looking thing on a real graph, but you can just ignore um, drawing anything on the dotted line. And instead, we would jump to this part right here where there is also a slope. Of zero because it's flat so the acceleration versus time graph would just have a line at zero across the whole thing um, if you ignore the middle dotted line part okay so now let's talk about this second graph here I have a position versus time graph that doesn't move the slope is zero which tells me I have zero velocity and so I draw a line at zero on my velocity versus time graph and it's not changing which means I have zero acceleration and I indicate that with a flat line on my graph. Okay now for the second part I'm actually going to draw little tangent lines to give me an idea of what's happening to the slope. At the dotted line it's flat, in the middle uh, the steepness has increased and by the end the steepness has increased more. Now what that tells me is that the velocity is going from zero to a positive slope. Um, so that means I would go from zero to some positive velocity. Now for all of these graphs we're going to assume that the acceleration is constant or uniform. We call that UAM. All that means is that on our, on our velocity versus time graphs for now we're going to always have straight lines because the acceleration we're assuming is constant during these periods. So you would have a straight line that goes up to some positive velocity for the second part of the graph. And the acceleration here, since this is a positive slope, you would have a quick jump to some positive acceleration and then a flat line because, again, the acceleration is constant. So our velocity versus time graph during that section is a straight line and I know that I should have an indication that I have some positive acceleration that doesn't change. Okay, let's look at the next graph. In the first section, um, you know what, it actually looks like this whole graph is just one continuous motion. It's not segmented into like a part one and a part two. So you can almost ignore that dotted line. Um, and in this, it looks like you're starting with some negative slope. That means that I start with some negative velocity. And then it gets less steep, less steep, until here at the end, the slope is zero. So that tells me that my velocity is going from a negative number to zero. So I should mark zero on my velocity versus time graph 
and draw a straight line connecting the two because again we're assuming that the change in velocity is always constant uniform accelerated motion and I can see that yeah I went from some negative velocity here and then I decreased in speed until I got to zero um, so in this example the object is slowing down okay well the acceleration uh, versus time graph if I look at this line this slope is positive the entire time which means I would have some positive acceleration uh, now this is interesting because when we think of positive accelerations we don't necessarily think of an object that's slowing down and that's not necessarily true in physics for us acceleration just means that the objects changing its speed its uh, its velocity is changing whether or not an object is speeding up or slowing down determine is determined by um, the uh, direction of the velocity and the direction of the acceleration which we'll talk about that in a second but here you can see all of these velocities are in the negative quadrant so they're all negative velocities maybe this object is moving left and the acceleration is positive which tells me that this object is moving left and its acceleration is to the right but that doesn't mean it moves to the right it just means that it's slowing down until gradually it reaches zero and comes to a stop okay now let's take a look at uh, this next graph here I do have two clear sections so I will look at the dotted line um, I start with some positive slope here and eventually approach zero which means I should start at some positive velocity and then later end up at zero I have a straight line connecting the two again the change in velocity is constant uniform acceleration okay then for this second section I don't move so no velocity zero really easy okay um, the acceleration versus time graph here I have a negative slope which means I have some negative acceleration uh, and the slope on the velocity versus time graph doesn't change because our acceleration is constant so I would draw a flat line here uh, and then in this part the slope is zero so there's gonna be a quick jerk up to zero on the acceleration versus time graph oh there's a bell and then you draw a solid line at zero okay now in this example the object would be traveling with some initial positive velocity and then eventually here it would come to a stop now our velocities are in the positive quadrant sorry for the first section our velocities are in the positive quadrant so I would have positive velocities to the right my acceleration then needs to be negative or to the left so that as I move to the right with some positive velocity maybe it's three um, I am slowing down until eventually I reach a velocity of zero all right so um, this is how you match position versus time graphs to velocity versus time and acceleration versus time graphs um, and we should also use this as sort of an opportunity to discuss speeding up versus slowing down uh, to write it formally in our notebooks so when you're speeding up or slowing down here's a great example um, I call this the frowning face graph when you're speeding up or slowing down it has everything to do with whether or not your acceleration and velocity are in the same direction or if they're in opposite directions so let's write that down an object is speeding up when a and V are in the same direction you just write the same direction an object is slowing down when a and V the acceleration and velocity are in opposite directions so we can use this as sort of like a key to help us understand even graphs and generally I just try to look at the velocity versus time graph because whenever a velocity versus time graph is approaching zero it's slowing down it doesn't matter if they're positive or negative velocities and whenever velocity versus time graph is going away that means it's speeding up so let's take a look at this example here I have in my first section of the motion some positive slope that eventually goes to zero at the top so that means I would have some positive velocity 
that gradually decreases until it gets to zero. Okay, then at the bottom, I'm going to have some negative slope, which means I have a negative velocity. So let's say that that negative velocity is here. And the velocity keeps changing, so it goes from a positive velocity to zero, and then from zero to some negative velocity. Now the slope of this entire line is negative, right? So for our acceleration versus time graph, we would just have a solid line that's horizontal in the negative quadrant. When is this object speeding up, and when is it slowing down? Well, think about when the velocities and the accelerations are in the same direction, and when the velocities and the acceleration are in opposite directions. Here, in the first part of the motion, the velocity starts at a positive number, maybe it's, let's say it's 5, and then it goes down to 0. It decreases in quantity until it gets to 0. Okay, so that means I have positive velocities and a negative acceleration. So for the first part, it's slowing down. You should be able to see that from the graph because I start with a steepness here and then at the top I have a slope of zero. So that means I went from some speed and approached no speed, right? I went from some, uh, some five meters per second, let's say, to the right, and then I slowed down and stopped. Okay, well, what about this second part of the motion? Well, now I'm going from zero slope to a negative slope, which tells me I'm going from zero to some negative number. That doesn't mean I'm going slow. Negative doesn't mean slow. It means now I'm moving left. First I was moving to the right, then I stopped. Now I've turned around and I'm moving to the left. So here I have negative velocities, which just mean I'm going left, and a negative acceleration. So that tells me I am speeding up during this second part of the interval, which again makes sense because I'm going from no speed to some speed here. The fact that that uh, velocity is negative doesn't really affect whether or not the object is slowing down or speeding up because again negative does not mean slow negative does not mean slow negative does not mean slow negative is left west south you can speed up or slow down while moving left west south so the key to understanding if you're slowing down or speeding up is by looking at the velocity and the acceleration and their directions Congratulations, you are done with this video.